a moment to calm your hearts and your minds. And now let us, each in our own way, turn inward together. Sometimes all it takes is looking around. We come, each and every one of us, all too aware of the, the power that worry and pain, trouble and loss have over our attention. There is not one of us here without a, a burden weighing us down. Who of us wouldn't lean into the person next to us and accept a hug if invited, right at this very moment? These troubles we, we carry so often and so easily fill our view. And yet, and yet we gather again this morning to be restored, to be reminded that while good guys and good gals don't always win, grace and beauty is always too plentiful for the darkness to ever completely shut goodness out. And so this morning, we give thanks for friends who reach out with perfect timing and a kindness that reminds us that we're never truly alone. For music that soothes and reconnects us to hope in a way that words simply can't. And for simple things, good God, may we never lose sight of the preciousness of simple things. A handwritten note telling us we're loved, a poem that perfectly captures the way we are feeling, the loyalty of a pet, the warmth of a long hot shower or soak in the tub, the way a child bounces back or delights in something new, helping us see things again as the wonder that they are, the taste of freshly picked strawberries, a wonderfully mindless TV show or movie, or even the simple beauty of a flower. Some say religion is a crutch. We know what they mean. None of us want our religion to be soft-minded or prevent us from looking at the sometimes brutality of life, and so often we too echo this criticism of religion being only for the weak. But in the soft stillness of this moment, let us all confess our need to lean on one another and have at least one place in our lives where we don't have to pretend we can stand on our own. And so for the beauty that surrounds us every minute of our days, for friends who walk this journey with us, for hearts that get tangled and woven together and thus never separate even when we leave each other for different trails. For these simple, sacred, precious Sunday mornings that bring us back to life and remind us who we really are. We say thanks. In the silence we now share, may we sit with that gratitude and let it wash over us anew. Let us be silent and grateful together. May the silence we have shared continue to hold and heal us all. Amen. <clears throat>
My father was a master gardener in many ways. Every house we ever lived at was the house people would come to and check out the garden and talk to dad for long periods of time about what his garden was like. Indeed, they moved from Wisconsin to Pittsburgh five years ago. And three years into developing his garden, he was on the perennial tour for Rochester's perennial garden and had 450 people through his garden. Like, that's how quick he does all this stuff. So I grew up with him, and he had a Zen garden in one of his gardens in Wisconsin, which was beautiful. You know, it was a great place to go and meditate, and be, but it had rocks in it and moss. And there was more weeding to be done there than you would ever want to do or enjoy. And as a teenager, anytime I had kind of angst, my dad was the one that I'd go to and just hang out and he'd listen to you and, and kind of bring you back. But all the summer when you went to him and talked about, I got to just talk to you, Dad, he'd say, that's fine, let's go weed the Zen garden. I'm like, I don't want to weed the garden. Really? Do I have to do this? Yeah, just come. Do it. So most of the time, we didn't even talk. We'd just weed together. And I realized how helpful that was, what a spiritual practice it is just to be in silence. It reminded me that whole piece of the Quakers have a saying called, hands to work and hearts to God which I always felt was true with Dad in that garden. A year ago, at Christmas, my dad was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer and he was given a year to live. He died in January this past year. And uh, that garden had always been his place to go and kind of have that practice about being okay with life and whatever was troubling you. But when you are diagnosed with a disease that is right in front of you, and you know when you're going to die, there was a tremendous amount of anxiety that happened to him all the time, even in his garden that he had counted on. And in the fall, one of the things that I thought was just so fabulous about church people, about all of you, is the church people at First Unitarian, because they had gardened with him, came to his garden and just would hang with him and talk about the garden. And I realized they were doing pastoral care not by working together, but by being in that place that allowed dad to ease his anxiety about dying in a few months. They brought church with them. Church was not the building, but wherever they were, wherever they were listening, opening, and serving, church was there. It was portable. It was so fabulous to see. I was thinking about all that, and it reminded me that Scott had a barber in Syracuse who always cut his hair exactly the way he liked it. He's a little picky about his hair, and uh, <laughs> that's kind of an understatement. Um, <laughs> there's more product there than ever hits my hair. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Now the only problem with this barber was he would talk the entire time. But because you were getting such a good haircut, you were kind of beholden to him talking all the time. And he used to tell the minister who he had in front of him while I was cutting his hair that he had no use for church. He'd tell Scott that he thought it got in the way of spirituality. He'd say, my God is wherever I am. I am a church of one. That idea of being a church of one frankly baffles me. Besides disagreeing with it, I think it's just plain sad. There's something beautiless of an image of a church of one. And certainly it is true that being part of a human community can be hard. There is no doubt to that. One of my favorite Catholic theologians, Henry Nowen, says, community is the one place where the person you like the least always is. <laughs> but somehow, friends, in the midst of complicated and fragile and stumbling and always imperfect actions that we call human community, there is almost always a transformational beauty that arises and makes us whole. 
And it arises in a way that is simply not possible in isolation. Indeed, when it comes down to it, isolation is a myth. We really live and breathe and survive and laugh and heal through the gifts of others. And in the end, I think it is what it means to be religious, is to be aware that who we are is a result of the miracle of others extending and offering themselves to us. And it is this truth that we celebrate today. The flowers are brought forward today represent the various gifts that we bring to each other. The flowers are all different, of course. And it is not just the giving of our time, our talent, but in the giving of our uniqueness to one another. It is there in our diversity that helps us, each of us, break out of our individual kind of smallness and we become larger human beings together. Having brought your flower with you this morning, in a moment I'm going to invite you to complete our flower community by coming up and taking a different flower home with you than the one that you brought. Another church year has passed. We began it in anticipation for all that we would find and discover. And we end it in gratitude for all we have received and shared. May the flower you take home with you today remind you of all of this fallible, fabulous community. But indeed, it is a beautiful community. And so, as, as Karin shared in a minute, we'll ask everyone to come forward and, and take a flower, a different one that you brought. So I'd ask uh, for you to do a couple things. Just take some time now and, and think about what you've received through this community over the past year. Maybe one, maybe two things. When you come forward, pick a flower that represents that, that best. We're also lucky this morning where I want to invite this ritual to be a, a little bit more complex. I want to take a moment and be a little bit selfish uh, and add another piece to the ritual. But I also want to add another piece for us as well. In addition to the, the flowers, there's another thing I'd like you to pick up. As I said earlier, there's the flowers represent the beauty that, that we've received and given to each other. But this church also helps us blossom in many ways not just plant seeds in us, but helps those seeds grow into, into something new. So besides recognizing the beauty you've been given, I'd encourage you to think about people in your life, either here or out in the world outside, who this past year planted a seed in you and helped it blossom. And Petra and Matthew, please raise your hand. Most of us know they're starting a seed company, and so they've given us the great gift of having seed packets for us all to be able to take home with us. And so when you come forward, don't just take a flower, but take one of these seed packets as well. And then think about giving it as a gift to someone who's planted a seed in you. And before we do that, this is the selfish part. I want to celebrate, help us all celebrate the gifts and the seeds that we've been given here, but also in a way I want to do this to, to honor, honor everything I've been given in this church. And so there are a few seed packets I'd like to give out right now and have all of us celebrate with me. I want to invite after a hand a seed packet out I'd, and like to have all of you do a, a ritual piece with me. The first, I think we all know that we've been given the beauty and the gift of, of music, of music in this place that transforms us in a way that words simply don't. And so to represent that, we know who gets a seat back in. <laughs> and so with me, simply say, for music, blessed be. We also know that another great gift we have in this community is, is the caring we receive, the joys and sorrows we share, and, and the concern that is, is always addressed by those in our community. 
there are many people who make this a caring community, but I think not all of us know that every Sunday, virtually every Sunday after joys and sorrows are shared, Donna Brigham from the late pastors sends a little card. She is not here today, so Dan, please give this to Donna. My wife's here. <laughs> and also worship all of us so many people have participated in, in the past year in the past four years worship gives us inspiration and many people are involved but to represent all those people Judy I would like you to receive that Say with me, please, for inspiration, blessed be. For inspiration, blessed be. And as I said before, this feels like a family reunion every Sunday, and there are many, many people that make this possible. But I think we know the one that represents that the most is Ellie Severu for a lot of the work that she's done. And so as I give her this packet, could we say, for being welcomed back home, blessed be. I said I was being a little selfish, just four more. <laughs> For nourishment, we know that coffee hour and these potlucks are things that nourish us, so many people involved, but Jeannie, we know, represents that. Blessed be. For leadership, so many people are involved, but it's a leadership. Some people see that as just work, but we all know that really it's the leadership of this church that holds this place together. And representing that right now, we know is Lynn Overgaard. And so, for holding us together, blessed be. small groups have been important in so many ways and many many people involved and so right now I'd, I'd like just quickly our Soul Matters facilitators to stand Judy Nancy if Mary's here you can sit, you can sit down and so for deep listening blessed be <laughs> We love this place. And so all the work that's done by many people to keep our home the way that's welcoming, all the folks who are involved in building and grounds, we know there are many, many, many people involved. But Bob Gordon certainly represents this right now. And he's hiding back there. But <laughs> while I pass this back to him, can we say, for taking care of home, blessed be. For taking care of home. And the final two, for all the folks who have helped with religious education and passing on Unitarian Universalism to the next generation, I will give this to Ellie for all her work, and let us all say, for passing on our faith, blessed be. Social justice is, is a commitment that every single one of us have in this building. And it's not just to transform the world, but the way we do it is also to transform ourselves. And the way we do social justice here is, is a matter of spiritual practice and the spiritual practice of seeing other people's needs as our own. And D is a new leader in this group and to represent new leadership and the way that will move us all forward. I'll give her a packet and I invite us all to say, for seeing the needs of others as our own, blessed be. For seeing the needs of others as our own, blessed be. And 
So now, take a deep breath. Bill will play music. You can take your time. Again, take a moment of meditation and think about the beauty that you've received. Think about those who planted seeds in your heart and your soul. You come forward and take a flower or two and a seed packet to represent that. For all the beauty we've received, let us come up and receive our guests. from Reverend Max Coots. This is a reading that celebrates friendship. It's not about flowers, it's about vegetables instead, but I thought that's close <laughs> enough. <laughs> so as a celebration of the beauty we've received and the friendship we find here, I offer this reading. He writes, he says, there are friends who are gorgeous friends with hearts as big as Hubbard squash and smiles as bright as their blossoms, feisty friends as tart as apples, continuous friends who like scallions and cucumbers keep reminding us we've had them. <laughs> Crotchety friends as sour as rhubarb and as indestructible. Friends who are as gorgeous as eggplants and as elegant as a row of corn, and others who are as plain as potatoes. So good for you, funny friends, who are as silly as Brussels sprouts and as amusing as Jerusalem artichokes. <laughs> and serious friends, as complex as cauliflower and intricate as onions. Friends as unpretentious as cabbages, as subtle as summer squash, as persistent as parsley, as delightful as dill, as endless as zucchini. <laughs> and who, like parsnips, can be counted on to see you through winter? There are old friends nodding like sunflowers, nodding in the evening time and young friends as fast as radishes. There are loving friends who wind their hearts around us like tendrils and hold us up despite our blights, wilts, and witherings. And finally, there are friends now gone and going, like gardens past that have been harvested who have fed us in their times so that we may have life after. For this sacred 
friendship, the sacred garden of friendship and care. We say thanks and amen. Let us stand and close today with our final hymn, number 168. <laughs> Join us for worship every Sunday at 10 a.m. at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Canandaigua, a welcoming congregation. We are located at 3024 Cooley Road, four miles west of South Main Street, Canandaigua, just north of the intersection with routes 5 and 20. Look for the blue signs just before the turn. Your comments about this program or questions about the church are welcome at 585 three nine six one three seven O or at our website ww dot org Producer and Editor Daniel Brigham